Hello and welcome to the learning square. In this video tutorial I will talk about image compression using MATLAB. Now before getting into the details of the image compression I will first talk about DCT which is the discrete cosine transformation which is the backbone of this lecture. Now DCT is actually the real part of my Fourier transform which we had seen in one of these previous lectures that I had done. So if you remember Fourier transform was basically the representation of an image as a sum of sinusoids of various magnitudes and frequencies. So we had cosine term and the sine terms. The sine terms were the imaginary part and the cosine terms were the ones we are talking about here. Now if I talk about the one dimensional forward DCT, if I have a list of n intensity values, so my intensity can be represented as capital I function of x where x is varying from 0 to n minus 1 for n pixels. We can compute the n DCT coefficients using this formula. So rather than getting into the mathematics of it, we can just see visually how it looks like. So these are my basis functions for a 1D DCT. F0 would give me the DC value which is the average intensity value of my pixels. F1, F2 are the AC components and so on. Now if you notice these are basically mirror images about the origin. Now to extend the DCT from 1D to 2D what we generally do is we apply 1D DCT to each row of the block and then again to each of the column. So this is the mathematical representation of a 2D DCT. To be able to visualize this, this is how it looks like. F00 is this one which includes the lowest frequency in both directions and it is called the DC coefficient. It determines the fundamental color of the block while rest of these are the AC coefficients. Now let us consider a 8 cross 8 image with pixel values specified. So we had already touched upon the basis vectors in our introductory lecture of Fourier transform. DCT is a similar way which has basis images as shown here. So we can think of an image as a construction of these basis images. Now suppose I want to get a shade of my color. What I do is I define the strength of the component colors that I have that is the RGB basis to get the desired shade. In analogy we can hence define any image as the composition of these basis images. Where the coefficients of these basis images tell me the strength of the presence of that particular image in the final image. So if I have an image which is not changing much it is kind of flattened out then the major component would be this. If I have an image which has vertical images it's basically a vertical bars then these would be the constituent images at the most. A horizontal bar would constitute of these images. Now why do we actually do DCT? For a typical image the colors and the intensity values do not change abruptly between pixels hence the transformation on observation shows that most of the visually significant information about the image is concentrated in just a few coefficients of my DCT. So that's the energy compaction attribute of my DCT transformation which is useful in getting a compression of the image. Now one more thing we have to remember is that DCT works on pixel values ranging from minus 128 to 127. So let's realize this using MATLAB. So here I have an image BB which is a vertical bar you can see it here. It's a 200 cross 200 uint. So I can just see it. So that's my vertical bar. Now I do the DCT of this. So I have this inbuilt command called DCT2. It automatically re reduces each value by 127 to be able to perform this operation. Now I get a handle of this image that I have. So I say image SC just to be able to visualize this. Otherwise all the coefficients will be difficult to realize on this command window here and I say I am pixel region H. So you can see here this is what I have. Now since this is a vertical bar I should have horizontal coefficients present. So that's what I was saying my vertical bar it has horizontal coefficients present here. The coefficients tell me the presence of that particular basis image in this particular image that I had. Similarly I have another image which is a horizontal bar you can see this is an RGB image because it has three planes here. So I will just perform the DCT2 by converting it into RGB to gray and then this value. Again get the handle of it and see this. So this should give me the vertical bars. So I have vertical coefficients and the rest are, rest are zero. They are not present. So these are the coefficients which are present. So if you just see it here these are the images that constitute that particular image and the coefficients of each and every basis image tells me how much is the strength of that particular or the amplitude of that particular basis function. Now if I have another image which is the sidebar you can see it first so figure I am sure A. So that's my image 
if I again perform the similar operations here also it is an RGB image so I'll perform this get a handle of this and see this so you can see the coefficients are present here this brings us to the end of this lecture I have touched upon the DCT in this I will continue with this series so see you in the next if you like this video please hit like see you in the next one thank you